today on V8 Extra, we're back on the road and visiting Stone Brothers Racing on the Gold Coast. SBR is one of the most successful outfits in the pit paddock and we'll catch up with team owner Ross Stone plus the team's three young chargers, Tim Slade, Alex Davison and Shane Van Gisbergen. That's all ahead on V8 Extra. again to V8 Extra. Yes, it's one of our workshop show specials and today we are at Stone Brothers Racing, the home of Lucky 7 Racing, of Irwin Tools Racing and SB Tools Racing and we've got a fantastic audience here today. Give yourself a round of applause. We've got a great show lined up today. It's a very busy show as always. I can't do it without a sidekick. Please welcome Mark Larkham. Thanks, buddy. Hi, Mark. Thank you. This is a great place, isn't it? What oh. a great heritage. Smell the engineering. Yeah. Just smell the engineering in this place. That's Only you could say that. Well, I have. I, I, I did. I, I ran with this team in uh, 97, 98, 99, and, and they are, to me, still to this day, hardcore racing team. They, you know, and there's, there's, in a corporatised world, I like that. And they've had tremendous success over a long period of time. Three championships, 40 race wins, 27 pole positions, and the guy that's headed it up now for 14 years joins us now as our special guest. Please welcome Ross Stone. Hey, Ross Stone. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. I can't believe it. It's gone pretty quickly, the old 14 years, and you've had tremendous success along the way. Congratulations, Ross. Yeah, sort of overnight success, I guess. But um, <laughs> before that 14 years, it was a few years before that as well. Well, I've known you for an awfully long time, and you've been involved in various facets of the sport with a whole bunch of teams, but some proud moments along the way for you guys, and you continue to kick goals. Yeah, and, um, you know, you're only as good as your last race, so we really want to make the next one really good. So, you know, we just been working really hard to try and get back to that championship um, winning position and uh, we're second in the team's points and so we've just got to keep at it, keep doing what we're doing and we'll be fine. Roscoe, you guys have achieved a lot and you always underscore what you have achieved, although the hardest thing I've ever seen you do was in the makeup room just then, I know you struggled <laughs> with that. And, and, and I might add that's why Jimmy's not here. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah, we, we, tried, we tried hard we to did, get him. We tried to get Jimmy and Jimmy like Ross, hardcore racing, not a TV type of guy but what, what's left to achieve? I mean, you've, you've done it all. Because a lot of people don't know, Ross has actually won, he's got enough driver's trophies of his own. Jimmy's worked right up to the top echelon of our sport on a worldwide stage. What's left? Well, I guess we, we uh, Jimmy and I, and I have decided we really want to win another championship. Yep. And then once we do that, I'm sure there's another one after that. <laughs> so we feel there's a couple, couple around the corner, a year or so away perhaps. Um, but and, and it's all just a good lead up, hard work now and, and um, we'll see those championships come, I'm sure. I reckon you will. There's always another one just around the corner. We're nearly out of time in this first segment, but mm. quickly, it must have been a proud moment for you in New Zealand with Shane's win. Yeah, New Zealand's been really frustrating for us because, um, you know, we've been over there with Marcus Ambrose and Russell and we've been on podium but we've never ever won. So to win in New Zealand was um, a special moment. Now, one of the things that marks this team as particularly special is the one-stop shop capability. I mean, all around here, it's like a campus, Larko. I mean, basically, you can start with effectively nothing and create a race car, a race car. like that. Well, we said at the head of the show, I mean, they've got uh, what, fabrication, machining, paint, panel, an engine shop. I mean, world-class facility. So what we're going to do, Neil, mm -hmm. I thought, how do we get these guys to show off their capability? Right, so I've got a chunk of billet here, <laughs> right? Just follow me through here. Um, I wanted these guys in 30 minutes, because that's plenty of time, to make a little bit of a, a piece of memorabilia that we can actually put at the end of the show on Bid for Jace. We all know about Bid for Jace. Great concept. What I've asked them to do, a bit of a V8 Extra logo, out of a nice piece of build, billet aluminium, just like this, maybe a couple of Conrods. Very nice, maybe a flywheel. And we'll put that on a nice aluminium plate. We might get the drivers to sign it. Giving them 30 minutes, Neil, to make that. You reckon you can knock it up, Ross? <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but we'll yeah. have a go at it. Just like the old days, tough, but we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so the challenge has been issued. We're going to take a break on V8 Extra, but we'll roll back to where it all began, back in 1998, to Bathurst, and Jason Bright's win in the 1000. <laughs> A 
changing of the guard here. Two young guys, the 25-year-old Jason Bright, 26-year-old Stephen Richards. This is their first Mavis win. Well, this is it. This will be Ford's first round win since round five last year at Winton as Bright comes across the line. Bright, no doubt about it, takes race three. Well, this is a major turning point for Ford in the Shell Championship Series. Welcome back. Stone Brothers Racing Special here on V8 Extra. Time now to welcome one of the stars of the team. Keep the applause going from Lucky 7 Racing, Tim Slade. Hey, dude. Hey, yeah. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Ups and downs. I think 15th in the championship at the moment. But you've had a couple of outstanding results and you had a couple of crook ones as well. Tell us about your year. Yeah, I guess uh, it has been a little bit frustrating at times. You know, like you said, we've had... Uh, had some ups and downs and uh, you know I guess at the majority of the rounds we've had really good speed and a couple of uh, I guess runs where we had a little bit of bad luck and you know a couple where I've, I've made mistakes as well so we are back on the up and you know can't wait to get to Darwin. Looking forward to it because you've had great results there some personal best stuff from you. Yeah I guess you know that was a, a bit of a breakthrough round for us last year qualifying third and then um, sixth in both races and I think we're uh, we're definitely at a better point with the cars at this stage this year, um, you know, compared with last year. Stay with us. We've got more to cover off very shortly, Timmy. I want to take a look, though, at the progress of Larco's device, which is what I'm going to term it, over in the machine shop at the moment. The challenge is on. The Stone Brothers Racing memorabilia bid for Jace item. It's being processed as we speak. Now, speaking of Larco, we all know just how close V8 supercar racing is. And in this business, you've got to try and hunt tenths of seconds. To that end, he's going to show us something where there's a lot of time to be found. I'm down in the belly of Stone Brothers Racing and what I found here is what's called a rolling road, a chassis dyno. And what they can do is actually put their race cars on this device, they strap the car down as you can see, but there is literally a rolling road. So you can drive the car proper in this room, you can do gear cut checks, you can do economy checks, you can run your engines in. Today we are going to have a look at gear cut, so let's climb aboard and I'll show you some detail. So here I am in the cockpit and this is the gear cut that we're talking about today. And what it is on the gear stick is there's a device in there called a strain gauge. Now what it does, it electronically measures the strain on the gear stick. So when I pull the gear stick, it will cut the engine for me for milliseconds and allow the gear shift to happen. So I don't have to, as I would in the old days, I don't have to lift my throttle, I don't have to depress the clutch to go up through the gears. And I know precisely when to change the gears because up here is a series of LED lights that I can program individually for myself as to when to change gears. So they shine in my eyes, bang. So it's all very efficient and buys you those important tenths of a second on a race circuit. So what I want to do now is run up through the gears doing a conventional gear change and then I'm going to show you the efficiency of doing it with the gear cut. Let's give this a crack. I'm sure that law looked pretty easy from behind the lens there, but I can tell you, this 650 horsepower animal chained to the back wall, doing nearly 250 k's in this little room, that is one of the most overwhelming things I've ever done in a race car. But the purpose of this, let's go back to the tech centre, get it up on the screen so we can have a look at the data from the conventional gear shift to the electronic gear cut. Let's have a look at it, Neil. That story, Larko, is that I'm here in your tech centre. So what I want to do, and I've still got Timmy with me, is turn all that into some mathematical facts. And so we've got some data here. You've probably never driven a car other than one. Oh, Larko's back. Give him a round of applause. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Mr Noisemaker. 
That was unbelievable for you, Neil. You didn't really go anywhere. Was. Have you oh. ever driven a car where you've done anything other than flat shift? I don't think so. That looks like too much hard work. <laughs> well, we're dinosaurs. We did all of that stuff. This is you, Tim. Typical stuff, say, for example, down the straight at Darwin, flat shifting, pull, pull, pull on the gear lever. Here's Larko and I going through the whole business of cycling the clutch pedal together with the accelerator. Now, this area here, when you actually measure it on the data, is somewhere between about one and a half to two tenths of a second. And so when you translate that into distance, Larko, it's a lot of time well, lost at the yeah. rear wheels. Two tenths of a second. OK, that's quickly going to go into something like 10 to 13 metres. You're going to be somewhere in there. Now, remember, hang on, Tim, you stay there for a sec. OK? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just remember there's ten opportunities at Darwin on an upshift where you can get that wrong and cost yourself that amount of time. Counted yeah. to ten there, that was pretty good, wasn't it? That was very impressive. <laughs> Lucky you've got ten fingers and toes there, Larko. <laughs> so we're going to take a break on V8 Extra and we're going to go to the break with Marcus Ambrose doing his stuff. But stop and think about it. One gear shift from fifth to sixth in Darwin at 240 kilometres an hour could cost you just 10 to 13 metres. That's how tight things are in this field. Stay with us on V8 Extra. <laughs> for 2003, but more importantly, the first time since 1997, Ford have the championship. And you've won it. Champion in for May, dominating weekend, and you're now the champion. Marcus Ambrose is now officially the 2003 V8 Supercar Champion. Performance for Marcus Ambrose and Greg Ritter. Here's the victory. Great job. For Marcus Good Ambrose. So some great decision making there, some great preparation from Stone Brothers, not only in terms of the cars, but their co-drivers. Thanks for joining us again. V8 Extra, welcome back. Great moment for Stone Brothers at Sandown 2004. The one-two for Marcus Ambrose and for Russell Ingle. Time now to welcome our next special driver guest. Put your hands together, please, for Alex Davison from Irwin Tools Racing. There you go. Hey, mate. Good to see you. Great start to the championship for you. Seventh so far. Been the best start we've ever seen from you in this series. Yeah, I've had a pretty big turnaround this year, which uh, probably started at Homebush last year. We really got the ball rolling, but... Um, Probably as a team, we've really lifted our consistency this year and had a few good results, so it's good to be uh, on a bit of a roll. New car's been kind to you. I think you got that in Tasmania last mm. year. You've clicked with your engineer, Dan Crowen, and things are rolling along nicely. In fact, it looks to me like all you guys, you're getting along well, you're not throwing fruit at each other. It's good. <laughs> it's all a show. <laughs> <laughs> we blew pretty bad, but... Um, no, as you said, we're, as late last year, we really started to get a bit of momentum. The new car seemed to help us a little bit. Um, Dan's come on this year and we're getting, uh, getting along really well and again that relationship relationship's sort of building and we're getting stronger and stronger as we go along so good what, times. What is it with you and Darwin and in particular <laughs> the temperature up there because every time this bloke goes to Darwin he fires. He got a great podium result in 2009. You got a pole there last year although you had that electrical gremlin but yep. you're on fire up there. I have no idea. Everyone asks me that. I think it's, uh, look, I enjoy the track. It's a pretty good little track, but I don't think I'd particularly drive better on that track than at other tracks. But it seems it's just suited our car the last couple of years and we've had some strong results. So we're um, looking forward to getting up there in a couple of weeks. Tim, is he a good bloke to work with or is he an absolute mongrel? <laughs> You can no. tell the truth, we won't no, tell anybody. It's a dangerous <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, I won't comment because we might bring up some bad memories from the past. <laughs> and Ross, Ross and Jimmy, you know, they'll, they'll fire into us again, I think. In the background at the moment, I can hear things whirring away in the machine shop and in the fabrication area because Larko, because he's got nothing to do most weekends, <laughs> sitting around doing drawings, <clears throat> firing them to the team saying, this is what I'd like to build for the bid for Jace item. There you can see it's making progress at the moment. On the subject of Larco, we get an enormous amount of email. People ask us all kinds of technical questions and this week's Big Pond question relates to diff ratios. Well, for you, those of you at home that watch the telecast, you'll notice that Crompton and Scaife in particular rabbit on with numbers and facts that we've got no idea what they're talking about. I mean, put your hand up if you've got no idea what they're talking about. Yep, there you go, there you go. So, crown wheel and pinion in the diff. This is a, what's called a crown wheel. Obviously, that looks like a crown. This thing's called a pinion. That's because it's called a pinion. Now, I'm going to grab someone from the crowd to try and show you how this works. Uh, good one. OK. Now, what happens, the tail shaft bolts on here and your wheel 
faults on here. So what we're going to do, you might hear the guys talk about, say, a 3.7 ratio. OK, put a white mark on here. Now, if I get my man to turn the tail shaft, remember that's connected, not just yet, sorry. <laughs> just, that's connected to the engine. OK, so what we're going to do, you start turning, we're going to count a full revolution here of the wheel. OK, so one, you count them, we'll get to three. Two. Two. Three. three. Now slow it down, keep going. Three and a half. 3.7. There you go, just go back a little bit. Well, that's facing upwards. So you can see that's about a bit over three and a half, 3.7. Now at Darwin, we're going to have a 3.5 diff. So you can see that there'll only be 3.5 revolutions to one revolution of the wheel. At Bathurst, 3.15. So now you can see how it works. <laughs> nice work, Arco. Hands up those who understand now. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. We'll take a break on V8 Extra. As we go to the break, we'll roll the clock back to 2007 when a very young Shane Van Gisbergen first joined our series. Stay with us. <laughs> Not a bad start to your V8 supercar career and I know a lot of people on the other side of the Tasman will be watching and cheering for this young bloke. The Stone Brothers Racing prepared Ford Falcon, Team Kiwi licence and livery and an 18-year-old at the helm from Auckland doing... But Shane Van Gisbergen has everybody on the edge of their seats. They roared approval when he took over the race lead. Well done. This is the day the wild child arrived in the V8 supercars. Victory for the Gears at home! We're just about done, unfortunately, at this very special workshop edition here at Stone Brothers Racing. And what a great moment that was for both Ross and Jimmy, the entire Stone Brothers outfit, and in particular for Shane Van Gisbergen winning on home soil in New Zealand. Now, as you can see on screen at the moment, finishing touches being put on the Larco Trophy, the bid for Jace item that Stone Brothers have graciously put together, which we're going to put up on the auction site. It's a good bit of kit, Larco. Mate, well, I can just hear the mills have just stopped, so uh, not long now, five minutes away. All right, time now to welcome our last guest today who we just spoke about did an awesome job in New Zealand. Put your hands together please for Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> Three Musketeers all in a row. Hey, well done. That was a, that was a tremendous moment. And Tough start to the Winton weekend for you, but a beautiful comeback on the Sunday. Oh, definitely. We qualified quite badly on Saturday, and uh, but Sunday we made up for it. We qualified ninth and got through to fourth. We needed uh, another lap there, but you know the race was 57, not 58, so that's what it was. But as uh, we've been talking about, off to Darwin, and it's a track we go well at, so we're looking forward to it. All three of you have had great results there. You must be looking forward to it. Yeah, last year I was on the podium both days, third both days, and yeah, Alex was quite fast. He got pole there on Sunday, so yeah, we're definitely. All excited to, to go up there. We've had good momentum the last few races. Do you feel old? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these young blokes. Unbelievable. No, it's interesting. I reckon it's a turning point in a young bloke's career because <coughs> when you yeah. went to Winton, you weren't that competitive, but you turned it around over the course of the weekend. And I mean, yep. to me, that's something that doesn't happen early on and it starts to develop. And I, you, you must feel that way, yeah? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throughout the weekend, we made the car better. It wasn't that great on Friday, but and then qualifying was, was not great. But, you know, our race pace is always really good. And, Sunday we, we tried a different strategy with our tyres and really helped and uh, hopefully that's something for the future. It's a family owned team and there's a real family feeling here. You blokes obviously get along well, you complement each other, is it enjoyable to work together? Oh for sure, you know our relationships have improved. <laughs> See well, Alex, yeah, you get along great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We might address that question after the program. Now look, what we want to do now is see just what this bid for Jace item looks like. Larko, drum roll oh, for you. Look mate, I'm pumped about it. Remember this started with a chunk of aluminium and a whiteboard drawing. Dave Stewart, the team manager. Thank you, Dave. Dave. Let's bring it out. OK. Now, let's, uh, let's lift the lid on this item. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Have a look at that. Now, these blokes have turned that around in such a short amount of time. And I reckon this is going to get some great bids, Neil. It is awesome. What Isn't a that beautiful? Gorgeous bit of kit. And it really underscores the way in which these guys work here. They can do anything. And literally in start fact, with this yep. and end up with, with one that. of those. Unbelievable. To add a little more value, let's get the boys to whack their monikers on it. And uh, I reckon that'll uh, add another grand to it. <laughs> fantastic. So get online. Yep. BitForJace.com is the address. It is a fantastic cause. Obviously, everybody knows that our friend Jason Richards from New Zealand is in trouble at the moment. We're trying to do our very best to support him. Everybody at Stone Brothers yep. Racing, in fact, the entire 
V8 supercar community is doing its bit to try and chip in and help. This is a great initiative. We thank Ross and Jimmy and everybody here for their efforts. There it is again. Look at it. You might... That well, I'm, I'm going to be bidding. That is just <laughs> outstanding. I want it. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at our next V8 supercar engagement. You can see the details up on screen at the moment. It is the Sky City Triple Crown, and that's coming up. Races 12 and 13 of the Championship June 17, 18 and 19. Our next V8 Extra, Will Davison, Alex's brother, is our special guest next weekend. And stand by on 7, mate. You'll also catch up with all the action from the Touring Car Masters. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Alex. Oh, and no thank you, Tim. Thank yeah. you, Larko. Thanks, folks. Hope you've enjoyed our program. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.